It's been a big week for news uh, affecting both the UK and the US economy. So I thought let's do an update on pound against the dollar, particularly considering that through much of 2022, we saw a big slide for the pound against the dollar, which accelerated in September due to the political turmoil we had here in the UK. And then in the last six months, um, we've seen a good rally by the pound off those lows coming out of that big downtrend. But since then, perhaps over the last couple of months, few weeks, we've seen the market be a bit sideways this year. So I thought, bearing in mind some of the moves that we've seen in recent months, let's take a look at pound against dollar in a bit more detail and see where the opportunities might be. My name's David Jones, and as usual in this video, I'll go through some of the recent news that's been affecting these markets. We'll look at some targets, then we'll jump onto the charts and take a look at the technical analysis in a bit more detail. Before we get into it, let's just talk about um, the newsletter I launched a few weeks ago. It comes out over a weekend, one issue a week, free of charge. It's a catch up, what's going on in markets, a look ahead to the next week and what the hot market for me is, the one I'm gonna be watching closely. There's a trading tip in there every week as well, uh, designed to hopefully try and make you a better trader and an update on the markets I'm trading and my trading performance. Uh, free of charge to sign up if you go to my website, jonesthemarkets.com, the link is in the description to this video. You need to scroll down to the bottom of the webpage and there should be a sign up box there at the bottom uh, for your email. Uh, I've also put a link to the latest newsletter in the video description as well, so you can get a feel for the sort of thing that comes out every Saturday. And if you sign up, you'll start getting that every week. Right, let's get into this um, pound against the dollar market and see uh, what some of the recent news has been. So we saw a great run for the US dollar for much of 2022, as concerns about inflation really gripped markets and the dollar was seen as perhaps something of a safe haven against inflation and because of the US central bank, the Federal Reserve's aggressive outlook on what they were going to do with interest rates, um, we saw the dollar gain against plenty of other currencies. So a really good run for much of 2022 uh, in the dollar fueled by inflation. And of course, I think perhaps some uncertainty and instability caused by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And we've had data out this week, again, to do with inflation. It's been a big week for inflation this week. So we had both US and UK inflation data out this week. And we've seen both of these numbers ease again. Um, perhaps, um, you know, we're still obviously at a high level for inflation, much higher than we were 18 months ago. Um, so we've, but we have seen them ease, suggesting again, we're past peak inflation, but there are still expectations for further rate rises from uh, both central banks. You know, there has been a feeling that central banks were behind the curve when it came to inflation. They have been paying, playing catch up and we are still expecting you know, a couple more rate rises uh, in the months ahead from these central banks. So we're not past um, peak interest rate levels just yet for the UK and the US. When it comes to forecasts for the year ahead, um, some are forecasting a further slide in the US dollar. We have seen that dollar slide though since September of last year. If you look at something like the dollar index, the US dollar against uh, a, a basket of other currencies, um, that, that is down by 10% since the September high. So a lot of, well, some of the momentum has definitely come out of that US dollar strength, uh, but, but plenty are saying, well, actually, this could well continue in the months ahead. Let's see, we'll take a look when we're on the charts in a second. You know, further out, some analysts, I think Wells Fargo was one I was reading this morning, uh, are expecting when economies hopefully get better and inflation continues to ease, some are expecting the US central bank, the Federal Reserve, to be more aggressive when it comes to cutting rates. So this is a long way away, relatively speaking at the moment, but you know, if we did see the Fed more aggressive, then traditionally that would put pressure on the US dollar. Anyway, let's see. Uh, it's been a bit of a sideways couple of months. Um, great trend last year in pound against the dollar, a good bounce back to, to, since September. So what's gonna happen next? Let's take a look at the charts. So let's take a look at this pound US dollar in a bit more detail. So we did see we had had a really good run for the pound off the March 2020 lows where it was trading around 114. I think that was the lowest level 
since the mid 1980s that we saw it trade down to there. Then um, traded as high as around 142, 143 in May, sort of February to May of 2021. But of course, since then, it's been a very different story. So going from those highs around 142, 143, the market did trade briefly as low, briefly below 104 in September of 2022. So one pound was only worth, was worth less than a dollar and four cents. That's what it would buy you. But what I think is interesting is what's happened with the trend and everything else. Let's, let's zoom in on the bulk of last year up to where we are now. So I've picked up on the highs from about February 2022. Are uh, coming into November of February 22 of, of 2022. And we saw this trend line do a really good job. We'd see rallies back to the trend line, the market would, would run out of steam. Then we had all that political turmoil in the summer and the early autumn in the UK, where it felt like we were changing prime ministers on a regular basis. Uh, saw the market sell off really hard. And then it bounced. If I was watching it here, end of October, November, I'd be expecting the market to run out of steam again. We'd come back to the old um the old trend line. The RSI had pushed up near an extreme as well, so perhaps we're going to see the market roll over. But actually, in November, we saw the first signs of a shift in sentiment. So we did see the market break the trend line um, for the first time since it had started in February of last year. So broke up, broke also through these old, previous fairly important highs from mid-September. They were coming in just above 117. And since then, we've seen the market move higher. So we did have um, something of a good recovery trend off those lows. Let's pick up on that. So that was the run in the pound. Uh, from that 104 area, traded up to 124.50 almost by the middle of December. So almost a 20% rally in the pound against the dollar. But we've fallen out of that trend now. So it's all been a bit sideways. So where next for the pound against the dollar? Well, it is something of a a tug of war this year between the central banks, um, the UK Bank of England and the US Federal Reserve. Uh, and there is, you know, perhaps a feeling that the Fed will start cutting rates sooner if things get better. But that's a long way away. We're still expecting further rate rises yet. Um, but perhaps that is something that could weigh on sentiment for pound against the US dollar uh, on the dollar sentiment and lift the pound higher. So for me, I think the trade that I would quite like to do here we zoom in. So the market has been a bit sideways for the last couple of months, but we do have um, good support from the beginning of the year. These are the lows for the year so far. So these, for me, would be an important level to watch coming in around 118.40. We have seen just uh, in the last couple of days, the pound briefly blip below 120 at the time of recording. So perhaps from a short term point of view, we'd be looking for a run back up to these old highs, the highs from December and the highs uh, in Jan of this year around 124.50. So for me, that looks like a reasonable short term target if we're expecting a bounce from here. If we look at the RSI, um, it has dipped into oversold in early Feb. Um, it did mark a short term bottom so far since then. And the market has come back and traded near these old lows around what 119.60 that sort of area so i think in the short term perhaps a run back up to those old highs is the target if we were going to get more bullish again from there let's take a look at some other targets perhaps the next one for me is going to be these highs from may of 2022 and also the highs from earlier in may of last year and they're coming in around 126.80 127 so i still think there is a bit of a problem on the upside for the pound if we do see it break out to new highs for the year, break through this 124.50 uh, mark up here. So there's maybe, for me, another couple of hundred points target from there, but it's an area where it might struggle. So I think we should be prepared for perhaps, you know, not too much in the way of explosive runs in the short to medium term for markets such as pound against the US dollar because we do have this, this tug of war going on in this market. Let's take a look at the downside though, because we have to you know, consider both sides of the trade. Before we look at some targets on the downside, let me just do a quick mention for the trading course I run. So I've been running this trading course for almost two years now. I launched a short term module in September, October of last year as part of demonstrating uh, my approach. I traded an account publicly for three months till the end of January this year. I talked about the results, the progress, on this YouTube channel. If you look at some of the old videos, you'll, you'll see it. 
But here is the performance. Here's the close performance um, over three months, trading the approaches that I go through on the course. I used an account size of £4,000 because I thought it was an amount that plenty of us could relate to. We may have less to trade with, we may have more to trade with, uh, but I thought £4,000 was a good number because uh, it meant risking 2.5% of the account in every trade meant my risk was £100. So it did much better, or I did much better than I might have expected. If, I, if I'd have made sort of 15% over the period, I'd have been happy with that. But the closed results were just under £2,200 profit over the three months. So on the £4,000 account, that's just uh, under, I think, a 55% return on the account. Of course, I have to say past performance is no guarantee of future performance. But to see a breakdown of the trades that made up that profit, and there was a fair few trades. It was, it was almost a trade per day over this 90-day period. You can see all of that and a bit more of my thinking behind it. And to find out more about the trading course, I'll put a link in the description to the video. And if you go to the website, it's the performance page of my website, but I'll put a link down below. Right, let's get back to the pound. So if we're looking at downside targets, I think if 118.40, 118 breaks, I think that the risk is that perhaps we go back to this area here, sort of 112 to 116. So again, I don't think we're going to see a test of those multi-decade lows down uh, from September last year, down around, down just below 104. Um, but perhaps we might have to get used to some frustrating trading in the months ahead with perhaps a lack of direction as we hopefully continue to move back past this peak inflation and markets start to get their head around which of the central banks might become less aggressive when it comes to raising rates. But always a really interesting market to watch. Like I say, at the moment, I'd absolutely be biased to be a buyer of dips uh, in the short term. If you flip this over to an hourly chart, you can see how important that 118.40 level has been so far this year. We saw quite a sharp reversal off that level and uh, around a 600 point rally. You know, we've come close to it over the past week or so. Let's see if it continues to hold and if the market has another run back up to 124.50. And if that level breaks, I'd start looking for around 127. We'll see how it all turns out. Um, I'll do updates in the live streams, of course, and we'll come back and take another look as the year goes on. That's it for this update in me uh, for Pound Against Dollar. Really interesting market to watch. I think there will be this bit of a tug of war. Uh, I can't see, like I said, when we were looking at the charts, uh, any explosive moves anytime soon as everyone tries to figure out, well, where are we with inflation? Are we really past the peak? Are we going to see a drop? What are central banks going to do? So lots of parts to the jigsaw at the moment. We'll see what pans out uh, over the next few months. Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter to start receiving it from this weekend. Go to my website, jonesthemarkets.com. There's information on there about the trading course I run, the performance, uh, why this trading course, all that sort of stuff. Uh, the links are all in the description to the video. Uh, but for now, we'll leave things there. Good luck with your trading.